Hi guys, and welcome to Sarah Shop Creates. Today we're going to work on this ice cream cone split tumbler. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tumbler. This is a 20 ounce skinny straight AF tumbler from Mother Tumbler. And I'm going to use this painter's tape to kind of establish where half of my tumbler is. So on one half is going to be an ice cream cone design and the other half is going to be a rainbow ombre. So this is a really easy method to kind of cut your tumbler in half and work on one section at a time. So I'm making sure it's going straight across the bottom. And this larger open space to the left is where we're going to do our glitter ombre. I use my airbrush machine to base paint this, which I didn't record because it's loud and messy, but you could also use spray paint. Base painting your tumbler, especially with light pastel glitters, is super important so that your glitters show up really well. So like I said, you can achieve this with spray paint, an airbrush machine, whatever you prefer, but I will be right back. All right, guys, so here we go. Let's start by putting a thin, even coat of adhesive apothecary glitter glue on our tumbler to adhere our glitter. I love this stuff. I prefer their thin mixture um, because, I, I don't know, I like how it's thin. It's easy to spread. It's not too chunky. But they also have a thick um, formula as well if you prefer your adhesive to be thicker. My paintbrush was gross. I don't know why. It looks like that. So we're starting out with my custom mix of Gossip Girl and Pink Panther. I combined these two glitters um, just to get a lighter pink because I didn't have any other ones on hand. And I'm using heavy coverage on the bottom and you can see how I very lightly sprinkled that into the orange. So now we're going to take Real Peachy from PDB and we're going to lightly sprinkle that into the pink and lightly sprinkle that into the yellow. And this is how you can get a really good ombre. Don't try not to have a heavy hand, you know, lightly shake it out so that it doesn't just pour onto your tumbler and make a mess. Now we're going to use Buttercup from PDB. Once again, I'm going to sprinkle that into the orange and sprinkle that into where the green spray paint is. The next color I'm going to use is Mojito and Heart Happy mixed together. Mojito is a really beautiful bright green, but I needed it toned down a little bit. So I mixed it with a bunch of Heart Happy, which is a white glitter, um, and that gave me the perfect color for this tumbler. Sprinkle that into the yellow and then sprinkle it into the blue. The last color I'm going to use is a mixture of Skinny Dip and Heart Happy. Skinny Dip is a really bright blue, and once again, I needed it way toned down um, to match the aesthetic of the cup, so that's exactly what I did. Sprinkle that into the green. And honestly, I didn't really have to fix any parts of this ombre. It turned out really great the first time. So now I'm going to peel my painter's tape off, and we're going to work on the other side of our cup. So for this, I'm using um, Crystalac Flippin' Awesome Paints. I'm just using their tan. We're making this um, a gold glitter. In my opinion, gold is very forgiving, so if your base paint isn't perfect, um, it's going to be okay. So I'm using this tan paint, and I'm using a flat paintbrush, um, and I'm applying a thick coat, but I'm being very careful on my edges where I already have glitter. You don't want to put too much paint there because it'll slowly just kind of seep into your glitter and you want to make sure you're getting really straight clean lines as best as you can. I got this brush in my PDB art resin box so it was perfect but any flat brush should do the job. Just make sure that you are taking your time and getting nice even coverage and you're not missing any parts. I'm going real slow, guys. Real, real slow. <laughs> the glitter we're going to be using is Perseus. Um, Kim always tells me I'm pronouncing it wrong, but I'll, I'll link it below so that you guys can find it. And this is a really beautiful gold glitter. It's one of my favorites. And I'm just applying that over my wet paint. And I'm trying not to get it into my pastel glitter. But if I do, I kind of just blow it off <laughs> because that pastel glitter is already dry by now. All right, now we're going to seal this in with Elmer's clear adhesive. I swear by this. This is going to keep all of your glitter contained and it's amazing. So ignore that little clip that was just there. So I'm going to apply two coats of epoxy on this until it is smooth and then we're going to go outside and power wash. So I am using Dawn Power Wash Dish Soap. I did use a little bit of painter's tape to mark off where the gold meets the rainbow and you can see 
nice even bubbly coverage and we're going to spray that with a metallic gold spray paint and this is just going to give it a power wash effect to add some detail and depth to our tumbler and then i'm going to wash it off with the shower setting on my hose look how beautiful that is this gave literally the perfect addition to the ice cream cone part now i'm going to peel that tape off it is wet and soggy but it's fine if you got any of the gold paint on your rainbow half you could just rub it off with rubbing alcohol now i need to epoxy this again before we add decals if you can look closely you'll see that there are a lot of lumps so i'm going to epoxy this one more time here in a minute which i did not show but you would just epoxy it like you epoxy any other cup I am going to trim off my top with an X-Acto knife real quick though because it's a little bumpy because of that chunky glitter. So I'm just taking an X-Acto knife and kind of scraping that all off and then I'm going to apply a coat of epoxy. You might not have to apply another coat of epoxy but mine, my glitter didn't lay super flat for this one so that's what I chose to do. Alright, after we applied another coat of epoxy, I'm going to take my sanding block and just kind of sand a little bit along those edges, anywhere where there's a bump, so that that does not show in my vinyl. For the most part, this cup was smooth, but there's just a few little bumps that needed taken care of. Alright guys, now we're going to work on the striping. This is Tech Wrap Textured Gold Vinyl. I'll link it below. And I cut these 11 inches wide and 0.13 inches thick. I will put those dimensions below. And I am just taking each stripe and I'm starting going diagonal from left to right. And I am making each stripe the same space in between. But I am eyeballing it. I did not have the desire to sit there and measure it so I'm just using my best judgment here and I'm putting them all the same direction on my tumbler. I will speed this up here in a second so you don't have to watch <laughs> watch me do this all in real time. Look how cute it is. I wanted to use a tan vinyl, but I didn't have any. So now I'm going to go the other direction. Now this is where you have to pay a little attention. You want to make sure that you're getting diamond shapes in between all your vinyl. So if you have to peel something up and try again, feel free to do so. But I'm just looking for a nice even diamond in each section. So I'm doing the same thing that I did first, but I'm taking these stripes and I'm going the opposite way. Don't think too much about it. It's really easy. And this vinyl is pretty forgiving, so if you make a mistake, just kind of peel one up and try again. So now I'm going to take an X-Acto knife and trim off all of the parts that got into my rainbow and overlapped and all of that. Now I'm going to take two more pieces of the gold vinyl, um, and I'm going vertical, straight up and down, to kind of separate the ice cream cone from the glittered ombre side and like I said it's really important that you do this on a smooth base if you have a bunch of bumps that's going to show in your vinyl and epoxy could get under it and it could be a hot mess this decal is from gracefully created I love it she just dropped it last week and that is going directly in the center on our rainbow side i did bring it down a little bit because i plan on having a drip and i did not want the drip to cover up the decal at all all right guys now we're gonna work on our drip the reason why i'm doing my drip before putting another coat of epoxy on this is because we're using sprinkles and those sprinkles have to be epoxied over so i figured if i do my drip now and let it dry then my final coat of epoxy is going to seal in all of my vinyl my decals and my sprinkles so i wanted to limit the amount of epoxy i was using and i'm using cc diy fast set i did about seven and a half milliliters of part a and seven and a half milliliters of part b and i'm going to mix that thoroughly i am then using the cc diy armor art white to pigment my drip i use that with a little drop of pink airbrush paint but you could also just use acrylic paint airbrush paint is just what i have a bunch of so that's what i chose to do and i love this armor art this is also what i use for beach waves just be careful if you're using acrylic paint not to apply too much if you use too much paint your drip can get really gummy so you want to be careful 
Here I'm adding a little bit of that pink airbrush paint, but not too much. And this just made it the perfect light pink to match my decal and go on my tumbler. I didn't want to do a white drip, <laughs> so I figured pink would be the best color to use. Now we're going to add a generous portion of nice and thick. I probably use two tablespoons. Um, I like my drips to be really, really thick because I don't like them to be really runny. So I do make my drip mixture pretty thick and I just work really fast so that it doesn't harden before I'm done. So we are mixing that thoroughly. I know it might seem really thick at first when you add the nice and thick, like it'll never mix thoroughly, but just keep mixing. Here I decided to add it to a bigger cup because I was running out of room um, and it's just, this was easier. I should have just used these bigger cups to begin with. So now we're adding more nice and thick. I use a ton of this, like a ton. I just, I don't have the patience to let my epoxy thicken. So I kind of force it to thicken on its own. So here you can see, this is where I was talking about. It might seem like you're mixing forever and that um, nice and thick is never gonna fully mix in, but it will. It will and it's gonna get super thick and that's exactly what we're going for. If you do it right, even though your mix is really thick, it will kind of flatten out on your tumbler before it fully hardens. So do you see there how it's, it's really thick and I'm mixing and I'm like, it's just, it's not doing anything. You just, you have to trust the process. You really do. Super thick, and that is exactly how I like it. I know that I am weird. <laughs> but that's like the perfect drip consistency for me. And after I mix it vigorously, that's what it looks like. All right, guys, so I like to put some on a popsicle stick. And I like to cover my whole rim first before I start to really force any drips. I like to cover the whole rim, and it will drip down on its own. I would say you have about six minutes um, before it actually starts to harden and cure with how much um, nice and thick additive we used. Look at it, it's so cute. This is perfect because my tumbler actually had a little bit of a bubble around the top, like my turner maybe wasn't level, so this drip is going to cover that up too. So now I can kind of force some drips, so I take more on my popsicle stick and I just go around it again, and I will add, you know, tiny little globs, and I'll spread it around just like you see me doing. And this way I can kind of force drips on certain parts of my tumbler, as you can see I just forced that one right there. And now I'm going to add a big glob right here. There we go. That is perfect. And this will smooth out on its own. And this won't drip down too much further. And that's exactly what I'm going for. I really like my drips to be short and contained. So that's why I make it so thick. If you're looking for a drip to come the whole way down your tumbler, you know, you're not going to want to make it as thick as mine. But I just like to keep it short and sweet. All right, so I'm just going to continue to go over it for a little bit. I'm also not worried about getting it on the inside of my tumbler. I'm a messy crafter. You know, we're going to clean that up with rubbing alcohol, acetone, exacto knife. So I'm really just focused on getting my drip absolutely perfect, and I'm not worrying about anything else. As you can see right there, I forced another drip, so I applied a little glob, and I'm kind of pushing it around to make it look exactly how I want. And do you see how it has all that dimension? Like, look on the left side you can tell that it is dimensional and it is not flush with the tumbler. And that is because we made it super thick. And I'm not speeding any of this up because I really want you guys to see how I do my drips. So I didn't want to speed this up and you guys not be able to really see. As it's still wet, I'm gonna apply my sprinkles. I've had these, I used to sell sprinkles, but you can just get a rainbow sprinkle pack on Amazon. I'll find one for you guys and link it below so that you don't have to look yourself. But like I said, I've just, I've had these forever. So I'm just using colors to match the decal. All right, after your drip is fully dry, I'm gonna take my Dremel and I'm gonna clean up that big mess I made. We want a nice smooth rim. So I like to use my Dremel for this because it is pretty powerful. And I use this on all of my tumblers. 
So I'm just going around. I'm then going to take an X-Acto knife and kind of trim it off as well. I know that if I was a little cleaner with my drip, I wouldn't have to take the time to do this. But like I said, in the moment, I'm worried about my drip being perfect, not my rim. Because they make sanders and dremels and I know that I can fix up any messes that I made. Be careful with your sprinkles though. These sprinkles can fall off very easily. So try not to nudge it with your X-Acto knife like I just did that little green sprinkle came off. I actually just applied it with super glue again. But this is also why we seal in our sprinkles. If you sell this as is, those sprinkles are all going to fall off. So you really want to make sure that they are being sealed in with an additional layer of epoxy. I think that's one of my biggest questions when I do a cup with sprinkles. Everyone's always like, do we have to seal those? Yes. It is super important. So now that I trimmed off all that excess with an X-Acto knife, I can kind of go over and make sure my rim is perfect, exposing a little bit of stainless steel. If you look closely, you'll see where the sprinkle fell off. But like I said, if you have just super glue, just glue it back into place. It'll be fine. All right, cleaning up the inside just a little bit so you guys don't judge me. <laughs> everything peels right off with an X-Acto knife. I love Mother Tumbler cups. I feel like the stainless steel is great and everything just peels off so easily. All right, we're going to do our last coat of epoxy together. I didn't want to deprive you of an epoxy tutorial. So we're going to do the last coat of epoxy now. So. I'm using epoxy for my goals. Listen, don't judge me. I had to buy it in a pinch one day, um, and I love it. And it's the amazing clear cast epoxy. Right now, I'm just kind of rubbing my finger over the gold vinyl to make sure it's all laying flat. Sometimes I feel like this vinyl can lift during the epoxy process. So I'm just using a lot of pressure and making sure every part is laying nice and flat. Trust me, take the time to do this because if it lifts, it's gonna be a huge headache to fix. Right here, I noticed this just needed a little bit of sanding to it, just over the pink glitter. So I'm taking a sanding block and I'm just kind of smoothing that out real quick. All right, guys, let's start our epoxy. So like I said, I'm using the Amazing Clear Cast. I had to buy it one day because I ran out and I love it. It's one of my favorite epoxies right now. So I'm doing eco parts of part A and part B. I'm mixing more than usual because I actually have two other cups from another tutorial to epoxy as well. So I'm just kind of killing two birds with one stone and mixing up a bunch. So equal parts of part A and part B. I did warm this up a little bit before. I stuck it in front of my space heater for about 20 minutes and that just made it a little easier to work with. And now I'm going to apply them both into the same cup and I'm going to mix very thoroughly. I usually mix for about five minutes with this epoxy. And then we're going to add a little bit of fairy dust from PDB Creative Studio. That is just a glitter additive that I like to put in my final layer just to give everything a little bit of an extra sparkle. And you're going to want to mix this until it is clear. If it's still foggy, you did not mix it enough. All right, guys. So a little bit of fairy dust. Listen, a little bit. When I tell you a little bit goes a long way, I mean it. I have put entirely way too much of this into my epoxy before. And it, was, it wasn't pretty. It really wasn't. So now with a gloved hand, I'm going to start applying an even coat on my tumbler. Now, I will say I'm not doing a thick coat because I have a feeling that this might need one more layer after this. So if I do a really thick coat of epoxy now and then I do another one, it's just not going to look super great. So I'm doing a very thin coat. I'm making sure to get up in the grooves where my drip meets my glitter. And then when I get to the drip, I actually kind of just dab my epoxy on the drip because those sprinkles are so sensitive. If I apply too much pressure, they might just pop off. So I'm just kind of tapping it up near my drip. 
making sure I'm getting really even coverage all over the whole thing. And this is in real time. None of this is sped up. So you can kind of see exactly how I am epoxying. So that's where I was saying I kind of just dab it over the sprinkles enough to seal it in but not too much to where a bunch of bubbles are going to collect because we don't like bubbles and I do feel like bubbles love to collect around drips. But we can also torch this with um, a propane torch and that will kind of get rid of any excess bubbles. Almost done guys, I promise. I just, I didn't want to speed this part up. I wanted you to see exactly how long it takes me to epoxy one tumbler. All right guys, we're gonna let that cure. And after it is cure, here is the final result. If you have any questions or need something explained better, please let me know. And thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.